Hey, Forex Fortune Hunters, Tom Wilmot, and uh, today we're going to take a left-hand turn and not discuss the Forex market. We're going to instead take a look at Fidelity Active Trader Pro one more time. We've had a lot of questions about what to do when the Active Trader Pro software throws you an 82 mile an hour curveball. So hold on to your hats. We're going to show you some tips and we'll get started right after this. Okay, fortune hunters, let's take a look here. We're going to, uh, as I said, take a little bit of a turn here today and focus on Fidelity Active Trader Pro. We've had lots of questions about how to use this uh, software platform for charting. And I know there are a million people out there using Fidelity and uh, thinking about uh, some kind of self-directed IRA or just keeping track of their portfolio. And for sure, uh, putting some technical analysis into the good fundamental research that Fidelity has to offer, as well as great trade execution, is a, is a terrific idea. But every once in a while, Fidelity really kind of uh, throws you uh, an 82-mile-an-hour curveball and puts a lot of stuff up on the screen that you have no idea where it came from. You logged out the last time and everything was just the way you wanted it, and now it is completely mixed up. So let's take a look at why that might happen. Uh, what happens here is that we have a number of uh, windows and sub-windows on the screen. And uh, for sure, we think maybe this has something to do with this layout issue up here. So let's experiment a bit. What we're going to do is simply clean this out because we want something quite simple and straightforward. And as you get used to it, you can certainly add uh, some more of these opportunities to it. Message center and your account values and your leverage and all the rest of it. But uh, for the time being, let's just start with, let's start with a chart. And we're going to take a new chart and uh, add that in. Now we're going to go here and I'm going to use the orange link actually and we'll go to Amazon and plug that baby in and here we go. Now we have our chart. We can open it up and see what's going on. Uh, right now we have a one minute chart and as we've discussed in other videos if we would open this up a bit we could uh, see larger candles. This happens to be what's called today which was last Friday when we had the bad report from the uh, Euro European region on lousy manufacturing results from Germany, as well as uh, continued concern about the Fed, you know, kind of reversing into interest rate policy last Wednesday. So anyway, big down day even for uh, Amazon, all the way from 1817 or 18 at the open, all the way down here to 1764. Now, if we move to a 10 minute chart, we can see even bigger candles and there we go so now we have that one view and this is the view of today now if we wanted a two-day view of the same thing we're probably going to get squeezed candles and sure enough we start over here we moved up higher and then we fell off the cliff on friday during the trading session so now we have our chart in place and just to review here was the place if you wanted to save a chart with your technical analysis on it you can move into this area. If you click Save Chart, you'll be asked to name it. And obviously, I've done a little bit of work here. This is my long multiple moving averages default chart. Okay, so now, how did we get these uh, particular things in place? Up here is just the review. We use a 12, 16, 20, and 24 EMA. And then we also use, uh, I've added a 28, uh, and I've added a 34. So we have multiple moving averages here as well as a 50, 47, 50 EMA kind of as a stop gap, uh, stop loss area. Now, and you'll find sometimes it comes down and touches here. Obviously, if you uh, would like a little more information about how I use the multiple moving averages, I uh, wrote a book two or three years ago. Uh, it's on Amazon, and uh, it's called The Crazy the amazing Zlander flytrap forex trading system and it talks about all of these multiple moving averages uh, and and how to use them but bottom line is when you have the averages and they're moving in the up direction wait for the pullback and uh, that is a simple but very powerful way uh, to uh, get, minimize your risk and maximize your reward uh, we can see here that uh, we had a previous high in this area. We had a drop. 
you had this. Now, if you were going to do some options during the day, this was a Friday options trade. You could conceivably start here. Consider that to be the high of the day. Wait for your first pullback, your reversal, and then maybe pick your options strike price up in this area here on the put side. And speaking of that, uh, let's, uh, before we quickly move on, if you want to modify uh, any one of these indicators, simply left click and you get a chance to modify, change the color, however you want to do it with the inputs, okay? And those are found here under indicators, and here they are, and in this case it would be exponential moving average here. And notice also that what we did on the bottom of this chart, oh, there's an MACD, we don't care about that right now, so we'll get rid of it in a second, but here was our relative strength index, the RSI, which is this one right here, okay? And basically, uh, on the RSI, we use a 45-55 band, and if we're below that band, uh, we have a trend to the downside, and if we're above that band, obviously, it's the reverse, and you can see that basically back here, here we are with the upside on this particular thing on the RSI on uh, Thursday as we moved higher and got to the all-time high. So, in any event, uh, now we are going to move on, and we're going to see, okay, now we'd like to add this uh, to our options chain. So, here we go, just very simply. It's the simplest layout I can give you. I'm going to come over here, link to the orange tools. Obviously, Amazon pops up right away. Calls and puts. Well, on Friday, all we really wanted to know about were the puts. And here we go. Now, if you would like, and this is March 29th, so the weeklies are here. You can either view them or not view them by clicking on these boxes here out to April 18th, which is on when our next monthly expiration is. <clears throat> and you can change the number of strikes visible, 10 uh, to 20 potentially, all right, or all strikes. But all strikes takes you, you know, all the way back down to $1,000, and that's crazy. So in any event, the, the other thing you can do is to customize the strike range so let's see what we'd like to do is maybe say uh, this is uh, this is 1750. Uh, come on, baby, 1750 up to 1800. Well, come on, we want to do this 1750 to 1800. Very finicky sometimes, but you just keep plugging along, and then hit enter, and it will review. And now we have the strikes in that in that range, and it's very convenient for us. So that's helpful. All right. Now, what you can do is to minimize this, get rid of it for the time being, and then any of the charts or graphs or options chains or account values that you have would be down in Tools and Use. Click here, left click, and we can see here the active ones are this Amazon 2-day 10-minute chart plus our Amazon puts. So those are always going to be down here. Now let's pull that back up again. Let's say you have a two-screen situation. Uh, not a big trader workstation, but two screens for sure. You can also, by clicking here, right-click, float the window, right-click anywhere on the screen, float the window. If you click on that, <clears throat> that will make it possible to move this off to your other monitor. Okay, so that's another way to uh, organize your layout and your screen. Now we're going to take this back. We'll go back and dock it. So it's back part of the uh, situation. We're going to downsize it, and then it will show up clearly down here in this area. And this may have fallen off your screen in the video. I apologize. But that's where you're going to find the situation. There we go. I'll move it over a little bit so you can see better. Tools in use, and you can see the chart is here and the option chain is here. Okay. So now let's see how we're going to do what we're going to do about saving this layout. If we've gotten it just to this level and we're very happy with a simple but a powerful view of what's going on in this chart, notice also that all we have to do to change this whole thing around is to come over here. If we're going to talk about FANG stocks, let's take Google and see what happened to Google on Friday. That had another one. But notice the great places to, to get into this was downtrend, pull back into the bands, downtrend, pull back into the bands, uh, either for trading or for whatever, but at least this gives you a view of what your entries might be. Now also, if you left click and hold, you can see that this arrow here uh, comes uh, back and we can move back in time if we'd like to, to see what happened. And you can see that last week we had a pretty big uptrick, uh, uptick on Google, a big move uh, to the north back on uh, Thursday of last week. Okay. 
Uh, one quick, quick more review for those who haven't seen the others. If you notice over here, there's a line. If you want to move this in a little bit, you can do that. Up here, you can go up until you hit that uh, uh, line to the top. Pull it down so that your graph and your chart is uh, all set for you. And once again, here was the way we handled this particular thing here with our 4555. Notice this pullback here came up into the bands but failed, and then we fell away from it. So here's a way to take a look at the uh, obvious, uh, at the obvious uh, uh, simultaneous and synchronized view of things. Okay, now quickly, layouts. And what we'd like to do now is to say we'd like to have this second default layout. And we want to save changes made to this layout. Yes. And now we're in business. <clears throat> and it comes back and it shows us what we're doing here in this area and how we can save our charts and layouts. So the next time we come to it, if there's a whole bunch of junk on the screen, we're going to be able to quickly move to a layout that we trust and we like and we don't have to start right from a zero. Okay, so have a good day, guys. Thanks for watching. Hope this has been helpful to you and see you next time.